When you think of Lost Legends, I think this car is probably one of the considered Lost Legends. Welcome to Island Rides guys, welcome to episode 6 of Island Rides. Today we have my boy Marcus over here. Tell everybody what we're driving in today. Uh, we're in a 91 300 CX twin turbo. So this is a Z32. Z32. The Z31 was from, was up to 89? Uh, 89 correct, and, and then they came out with these in 90. This is actually the predecessor to the world renowned known 350Z. 370Zs that everybody knows. This car is something special because it was way ahead of its time. Because yeah. this was a twin turbo car. I think this was the VG30. Yep, VG30 DETT. -E just to explain what the what that whole thing means, the VG was just the engine code. The 30 meant uh, the displacement and stuff. The D actually stands for DOHC or dual overhead cam. And this car actually has four cams. E stands for fuel injected and of course TT stands for the twin turbo. So what is it like driving this kind of a car that again, it was just way ahead of its time? Uh, it's fun and it's a little low key because everybody, you know, overlooks it because everybody just thinks of like, uh, you know, GTR, uh, RX-7, NSX. Mm -hmm. Like they don't really see like the twin turbo and like how actually quick it is, you know, like factory, you know, it's quick enough. It came out uh, stock at 300, 300 horse. Mm -hmm. And you gotta keep in mind, this is back in, um, 90. Back in the 90s, Back yeah. Back in the 90s, yeah. yeah. And people don't actually realize, like, mm -hmm. you know, how quick this thing actually is. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. 300 yeah. horsepower back then was a big deal. Yeah. A really big deal. And you don't really see too many of these around because not much people actually took interest in them. But for all the, all the Z owners, I think it's imperative that you have to know, like, where all those cars came from. When you look at the styling of this car, especially for America back in the 90s, the body shape was basically transferring from rigid body lines to just being round. And this car still held that look, 60 degree headlights. And the cool thing about this car was that, I don't know if you know. Lamborghini? Lamborghini, yeah, the right? Diablo. <laughs> right? See, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> if you look at the Diablo, you think of it as just an Italian car. But when you look at the headlights, if you were to take out the housing and look at the headlight itself, they're using these headlights. It's a Lamborghini, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would have thought, you know, like people would take something from a Japanese made car and then put it in a top dollar, you know, Diablo. Super car, and you think, yeah. of, you think of the Diablo, like how, how expensive the Diablo is now. In a way, you can kind of dub this as the Japanese Diablo. The Japanese Diablo, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your like most favorite part about this car? Uh, I'd say I, I'd say that it's a sleeper. I mean, unless they see like the intercooler. And if yeah. you're a car person, you know you know what's up. But yeah. I mean, people. I feel like they, you know, again, like they just overlook it and. Sh well, this car in particular has um, bigger turbos. It's uh, pretty much bolt on. The car spools a lot quicker. And somebody yeah. has to call me out. Then I be <laughs> like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so this car is, you would say, about 300 horse, about usually around 280 torque that's what they have it as yeah yeah factory is uh yeah like 300 with the bigger turbos i think it should be a little north of 380 so roughly about like four do you know what kind of um turbos are on here yeah they're the garrett um 525s so they're rated for 550 i believe wow one thing that you guys should know is that this car when you look at it from the engine perspective it's cramped oh, <laughs> like, oh sorry it, for my language <laughs> <laughs> but hell yeah but see exactly like it's super cramped and it's hard like you literally can't even stick your finger in like i think i took a shot of it just to get the dipstick you have to go under the strut tower brace yeah and that's kind of a pain but hey you gotta you do know. what you gotta do <laughs> yeah so how many miles is on this thing uh 142 i'd still consider it a little bit low because my 08 nismo i'm at 107 and this is a 91 Wow. And it's only at like 142. This car is older than me. Yeah. <laughs> we got seven you years too. on me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, wish you a happy birthday. Drop it down in the comments. He just celebrated his birthday oh, not too long you. ago. <laughs> Thanks, bro. So make sure you guys wish him happy birthday. What else mods did you have on here? I mean, like when you look at it from the outside, it's so, it looks stock. Again, it has that sleeper look. Yeah. It just got the Z1 hoses, the Mishimoto our radiator, the front mount, because factory comes um there are two on the side so if you look at the older or like the stock 300 the twin turbos you notice the twin turbos 
on the bumper have the um, the vents, so that's how you oh. can notice like, oh okay, yeah, that's a twin turbo. If you look at the NA, it's um, you know just flat. So I got the front mount, uh, bigger turbos, uh, AMS downpipes, test pipes, still in cat back. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. So add that on to um, like one of my favorite parts about this car. You know, it's a great daily driver. Mm. You know, it's pretty quick. You got AC. I know a lot of other people, their race race cars, yeah. you know, don't have AC. But you know, I agree with you. This thing did come out ahead of its time. I can drive this anywhere mm. with the bigger turbos, AC, decent gas mileage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bigger turbo, but decent gas mileage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> so if you don't mind me asking, how much? was this car purchased for? Because I have no idea the type of value or how they value mm -hmm. like this car specifically. This one, we actually got a steal. It was on Facebook, I believe. We got this. Shout out to Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook Market, please. Uh, yeah, two years ago, I believe, 55. Wow. It came with like a few things, yeah. but it didn't come with like the front bumper, the front mount. Um, the car actually was, uh, it was like misfiring. It was running on three cylinders. But yeah. with the engine base so cramped, we ended up having to drop the motor and uh, we realized one of the turbos were seized. So that's when it turned into like a big job. So we spent like a little oh. bit more bread on it. Yeah. My mechanic, uh, shout out to Barry, AP Garage. He nice. resealed the whole motor, uh, did the turbos and everything, just made everything look fresh. For this car, I feel like, again, this is a type of car where it's kind of lost in the limelight of the GTR because this car took a twin turbo engine. Yeah, for sure. Like, I agree with you again. I feel like it didn't really get the shine and love it deserved yeah. just because, you know, oh, it's a Z, you know, it's not a GTR and whatnot. But mm. if you think about it, like the Supra came out in, what is it, 98? Something like that. Yeah, yeah 98. The, 90s. the R34 came out the same time. And this came out in, you know, the 90, like seven, eight years before that. So as we're taking this bend, I also forgot this car has the Hikus, yeah? Yeah, I got the Hikus. Yeah, <laughs> I still got the Hikus. I on. totally forgot about that. So the Hikus for you guys, it's actually considered four wheel steering. What was the whole point of having the Hikus? Uh, it was supposed to be for like turns and stuff. So all four wheels mm -hmm. slightly turn mm -hmm. at the same time. But I'm honestly not a fan of it. If you're just doing like straightaways, it's a little spooky. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Because every like every little um, turn. So if you're gonna turn yeah. a little bit, all four wheels turn. Oh, so it's a little scary, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then 90 was hydraulic, and then 91 to 96 was electronic. So we got like this button on the turns. Oh, wow. In order to have four wheel steering, it has to be controlled by ECU. And back in the 90s, like it was pretty much a big thing for, for this type of engineering because, like, in split seconds, the car needs to know if it needs to turn its rear or not. Yeah. So this car actually had uh, something called VTC or uh, variable timing control. And we think VTC, it's not VTEC, so you guys know, this is a <laughs> Nissan. <laughs> yeah, it's a Nissan. It's no a Nissan. Here. <laughs> no I mean, no, no hate to Honda guys, you know, but there's no there's no E in there. So it's VTC, it's uh, variable timing control. In essence, the VTC is there because it allows the car to draw in more air, thus more combustion, thus more power. When the piston's moving up, in the sleeve as the exhaust is going out it's already drawing in air for the next time that fuel is injected just drawing in just a split second more of air would make such a big difference with the car and the purpose of the vtc was so that you have that low end power and like instant throttle response i'm pretty sure you feel it too yeah but well, this one is pretty responsive yeah i'd say pretty quick too yeah, yeah. and granted you have a you have a pretty good clutch yeah, already. It's like a handle. <laughs> so right here. So this is second gear. 40. So I'm brake boosting. So explain to everyone, what is the purpose of a brake booster? Brake boosting is when you you put a little bit of pressure on top of the brake and you're accelerating at the same time. So you got your turbos going, you got your turbo spooling ready. So right. it's a little different from anti-lag where you're just wide open throttle and up, 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 up. This is where it's just simple. It's a little small technique. It's a little brake, you add some gas, but you're not fully accelerating. You just want it where your turbos are just spooling. So when you let go of the brake, you already have, uh, you know, your boost up. 
Yeah. And it's already kicking in and you're just going. So in essence, it's just filling up all of your lines with air and when you're ready to open it up, it's just... It's right there, boom. Yeah. <laughs> you're going. It's kind of funny, like I have a Nismo 350, but before that, this is what I actually wanted in high school and stuff. You know, like everybody wanted 240s and yeah, a lot of people would take 240s over this, but I guess only people like, you know, the 90s. I wasn't even born yet, but you know, if you were born around this time, then you would, you know, understand like a lot of older people come up and they ask me like, oh, you know, nice car. And I remember this like back in the 90s, you know, like before the Arc mm -hmm. 7 and it's all these older guys talking story with me about it. It's kind of funny. That's <laughs> so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. That's why I like uh, the new Q50s, like the Q60s, Q50s, they yeah. have the 30 turbo, the mm -hmm. twin turbo. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's the modern version of this. Oh, I yeah, see. It's a v I VR30, DET. Change one letter. Yeah, I just one letter. <laughs> <laughs> same, same, but different. Yeah, yeah, for real. Would you ever sell this car? No. No, <laughs> no this is something like then my my grandkid or my son, if I do have a son, you know. Yeah. Let's see. Because my dad, it's funny, he actually had um he had one in '93 when it first came out. Mm -hmm. He had it for a few years. Uh, you know, just bolt on, just exhaust rims, and he got rid of it. And then uh, you know, like 20 years later, I'm born. I'm into cars, and he's the one that actually got me into Z's, and then you know, we picked cool. this up. Yeah, so yeah, one of his regrets was, you know, like letting that one go. So this is something for sure. Like it's gonna be like the family gem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is so cool. I know that feeling when you said, when your dad said that he wishes that he didn't let go one of his first cars. cars yeah. <laughs> so Bro. this is like a second chance. <laughs> yeah, for real. My first car I bought out of high school was just a V6 Mustang. Oh, okay. it was just a blue V6 Mustang. Your first car just teaches you like too many lessons and, yeah you know oh, yeah. teaches you a lot so it's kind of sick to let stuff go like that maybe one day we can actually get your dad in here and then you and the 350 and then do like a tandem island rides kind of a thing yeah that's an idea but yeah dude like honestly thank you again yeah no thank problem you for your time thanks for letting me be on here <laughs> make sure you guys like this video and if you if this is you guys first time make sure you guys subscribe again you know, this is just a sub portion of my channel. I do have my GTR wide body build, but along with that, I also have Island Rides. And again, Island Rides is basically just to share cool cars, cool people here on Oahu. And I'm trying to show that, you know, Hawaii is a melting pot in a form of automotive. So that's the whole point of having our Island Rides. But again, if you guys haven't done so, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe. I'm gonna go ahead and drop Marcus's Instagram uh, down below in the comment section or down in the description just so you guys can follow him. He has a sick Nismo 350 and we actually might put that car on Island Rides as well. Yeah. <laughs> but he's thinking about boosting that car. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Well, other than that, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember all of you guys are called to be great. You guys are all called to be great in your own way. And always remember, challenge your standards.